Second Most Fishing. I'm Jared Wold. I'm coming to you from West Branch of the Sugar River. This section of the Sugar River uh, is the West Branch. The next, over the next ridge north, you'll find Mount Vernon Creek, which is a very good trout stream. This whole section's been improved by the DNR and some of the Trout Unlimited chapter and other some other funds for that. The challenge with fishing this stream is that downstream of where I am, uh, it's mostly sand, pretty deep sand bottom. It's very hard to wade actually. I mean, if you want a hell of a workout, it's a great, great thing to try to do. So this section downstream, you pretty much have to fish from, um, fish from the shore, um, which isn't too bad. It's usually not too high above the water, so you can get down on your stomach or your knees and reach a net end to net a fish. Um, until I'd caught a couple 20 inch fish last year. The biggest inland brown I'd ever caught was on the stream. I caught an 18 inch brown about 20 yards downstream of where I'm walking right now. But I've caught, huh, last year I was here, took some new people out that hadn't trout fished before and we, uh, I did hook into one 13 incher just downstream where I am. This whole section's got an easement. The landowners along here are pretty uh, receptive as long as you're respectful. Don't leave, mainly don't leave trash laying around, which for the average trout fisherman that plans to cover a lot of ground, that's usually not too much of a problem. This little stretch here is doesn't meander quite as fast as a stretch upstream that ends up becoming a little more gravelly. Some muskrat and raccoon tracks here. It's uh, last day of January. So it's nice to be able to be out fishing this time of year. We had a little bit of rain kind of all morning. That's since kind of passed through. Supposedly we're supposed to have this big um, big storm on Groundhog Day a couple days from now. The air temperature on my dashboard was showing 37 degrees when I got out of the car. I was trying to fish a little section of the main Sugar River a little further upstream of where I am and it was a little uh, windy. It felt pretty, felt like it was around freezing or below because of that wind. But right now there seems to be no more wind, at least right here. That wind seemed to have been coming out of the south. I think this ridge to my south is kind of blocking the wind a little bit. Tricky part about working this, we have this marshy area here during the, once things are melted this becomes generally actually harder to walk the other thing about fishing this stretch you can really only do it um, probably until the end of May because by then the nettles are up and I mean if you're wearing waders chest waders it's okay but most people can't tolerate that much uh, residue from nettles starts to burn your skin a bit doesn't bother me as much but I took a friend of mine out here fishing one time and one May when it was the one year that we hardly had any snow that winter and it had a warm spring and uh, took him down here and I didn't even think about the nettles because they were already up probably two and a half three feet high and he was just wearing shorts and his legs got pretty burned up not sure what the water temps are 
I didn't take a temperature reading down on the sugar, but it's uh, with the rains having in the warm weather the last two days melting a lot of snow. I won't be surprised if, frankly, most of the water temps have dipped too low because of all the runoff. It's the irony of early spring or late winter fishing is that a good day for the trout fishermen may not particularly be good for the trout. The warmer it is, the colder the water temps are likely to be because of all of the snow runoff. But this little stretch of marshy area becomes hard to walk in when it's not kind of still frozen like it is. Because you're stuck walking all these clumps of... And you, if you fall in between a clump, it can be a little bit painful. Alright, one challenge is it looks like we do have a little bit of a shelf in quite a few sp spots on the river right now. And this river this is one of the places where I sometimes will run a downstream cast, even though I don't do a whole lot of that. because you're forced to fish this a little different than you would fish other stuff. One thing I gotta get used to is with setting up my GoPro, I tend to forget to uh, put my Polaroids on. Lighting conditions are such that I can generally see into the water okay. Problem with fishing from shore like this is you're always dealing with a lot of vegetation in your way. And along here the outer bank's deep. So the goal is to try to get casts as close to the opposite bank as you can. This is why sometimes having a longer rod when you're fishing a stream like this can kind of come in handy. Mainly because it's easier to keep your lure in the deep part longer. There's a decent little brown there. He's 10 inches, and he swallowed that. Come on, buddy. Hopefully he'll make it. 
All right, he swam off pretty fast, so that's a good sign. Man, for such a small brown, he sure swallowed that. The thing about these number fours, it's a pretty big treble, and something that small usually has a hard time getting that in its mouth. At least that, that much. All right, kind of caught me by surprise. Hadn't had a single strike yet, and that was a fairly good spot, good cast. Oh, there's another. <laughs> so it looks like I got a good undercut that I'm working right here. There's a fish. Pretty nice one too, I think. Or at least he's fighting, fighting like he's pretty big. Another 10 inch fish. 